Hey, fishing friend, JC here with Rad Railing Fishing. I have over 600 fishing videos in my library. I am qualified to share with you guys some tips about casting. We're gonna be looking at reels and rods and line and different things that will affect your casts when you're out there on the water. You guys, after you watch this video, apply the different things that you're learning here. You're gonna be a master caster. We're gonna get to it, you guys, right after this. I use spinning reels and rods. I'm not going to be talking about bait casters in this video, but you're still going to get some tips that will help you be more efficient at casting. Let's talk about line. Braided line is going to allow you to cast further than monofilament or fluorocarbon. The pound test line, a smaller pound test line is going to allow you to cast further than a larger pound test line. The knot that you use to attach your main braided fishing line to a fluorocarbon or a monofilament leader is going to affect the distance that you're going to be able to cast. I prefer an FG knot or recently the S C knot. They are slim and they are super strong knots, opposed to using a uni to uni or an Albright knot. And the reason is because those knots are fatter. They will clank through the guides of your fishing rod, especially if you're using some of these really expensive fishing rods that have super small guides. I mean, they put a lot more fishing eyes on the pole. And by the time you get to the tip, that thing is so flipping small and uh, yeah it's going to go clinkety clank and sometimes it will actually that knot will actually get hooked on an eye and your line will break if you're throwing a heavy lure so learn how to tie an fg knot or an sc knot a super slim knot you guys it is well worth learning how to tie all right let's talk about spinning reels you guys the larger a spinning reel is the further you're going to be able to cast so this is a 2500 size spinning reel this is a 4000 size spinning reel and the reason is because a 4,000 size reel is bigger and it has a larger spool. So that revolution of line that goes around the spool, right? One time around a 4,000 reel might be a foot and a half, but one time around a 2,500 size reel might only be one foot. So you have more line coming off of the spool um, faster, right? With a larger reel. So the, the bigger the reel, the further you're gonna be able to cast. So that's why you see these guys out on the beach using these really, really big reels. I mean, they're catching little dinky pompano, right? But they're using these huge reels because they can hold more line on them and they can get further cast. So while we're talking about big fishing reels, let's talk about, all right, so let's talk about a couple different types of spinning reels. This one right here and this one right here, they're both pin spin fisher 7,500 reels, but this one is bigger, you guys. And the reason it is is because it's called a long cast spinning reel. You can see there that the spool on that spinning reel is larger than the one on just your regular 7,500 pin spin fisher. Bigger spool, more line, it's gonna help you cast further. So if you're a surf fisherman, you might consider getting a long cast pin spin fisher, right? If you're new to fishing, I fish with braided line all of the time. I would highly suggest that you look on YouTube, find some videos where people have talked about how to cast with braided line, okay? Because there are some tricks that are gonna help you be more efficient at casting. You'll be a master caster, right? So another thing that's gonna affect the distance that you're gonna be able to cast is the amount of line that you put on your spinning reel. You wanna fill that thing right up to the very edge where it leaves just about a 16th of an inch away from being on the edge of the reel. Um, yeah, if that thing gets down to where it's got like an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch of the spool showing right here, um, it's time to add on some line, right? Because you're just not gonna be able to cast as far. That line is not coming off as fast as it was whenever you first spooled it up. So yeah, you all always wanna spool that reel up right on up to the top, right? I do a lot of kayak fishing, right? Recently, I purchased a really lightweight rod. One of the things that I noticed as soon as I got out there and I was fishing is that when I attempted to do a backhand cast with my lightweight setup, it was a whole lot easier to make a backhand cast. So that might be something that you would consider if you're out there kayak fishing or fishing in a boat all the time. And um, yeah, get a, get a lighter rod set up because it is a whole lot easier to just flip that bait with a backhand cast for sure. Okay, let's talk about the basics of fishing rods as they relate to casting. 
general the general rule is the longer the fishing rod is the further that you're going to be able to cast that's why you see these guys that are out there surf fishing they have these 10 and 12 foot long fishing rods with these big reels where i was talking about you get more line on the big reels that's so that they can throw way out there but also you guys um, not only that but those guys are using really really heavy sinkers like four and eight ounce sinkers sometimes so they have to have a rod that is rated for a large sinker like that right and generally your fishing rod is going to tell you what it's rated for a one ounce or a quarter ounce and you know it'll say a quarter ounce up to a two ounce size weight is what it's rated for so so yeah, basically the longer the rod is, the longer you're going to be able to cast. But there's something that's going to affect that. And not all fishing rods have this spe specification listed on it. And that is, so there, there's two things about fishing rods, right? You have rod power, and then you have the rod action. So the rod power would be like, it, it'll say heavy on the rod, or it'll say medium heavy, or it'll say medium, okay? But the rod action has to do with right here, okay? This, this section of the rod. So fast action means that this section of your rod here on the tip, it's going to be pretty stiff. And the reason it means fast action, and, and that is if you bend this, this is a fast action rod. If I bend this down and I let it go, it retracts fast. That's why it's called a fast action rod because it's stiff and it retracts fast. If it was a moderately fast action rod tip, that means that this would bend a lot more. It wouldn't be as stiff, okay? And whenever I would let it go, it would retract moderately fast, okay? So, so when you're casting, right, if you have a rod that has a moderately fast tip on it, you're gonna get more of a whipping action. Whenever you're drawn back to cast, that tip is gonna flex more and you're gonna get more of a whipping action at the end of your cast, right? So having a fast action rod may mean that it's too stiff, right? It's like using a broomstick. And so you're not gonna be able to get a long cast. So maybe a moderately fast action rod but like i said not all rods are marked that way okay like my ugly stick rods they basically just say it's a medium heavy it doesn't say whether it's a fast action rod or a moder moderately uh, fast action rod and this is why it's kind of hard to purchase fishing rods online without actually going into a sporting goods shop and testing out the different fishing rods, right? And of course, the fishing rods are made up of different materials. You've got graphite, you have um, fiberglass, and then you have your composite rod. Your composite rod is gonna be a combination of your graphite and your fiberglass, and who knows what else they put in a composite rod. But anyway, yeah, so whether you're using a fiberglass rod or a, um, a composite rod or a graphite rod, that the action it's going to be the tip action on that rod that is going to help you cast further so the longer the rod basically the longer you're going to be able to cast and the action on the rod is going to affect the way that you cast so you're going to be fishing in different types of situations and this is why one fishing combination rod and reel is not going to be able to apply to all spectrums across the board right all right, so the lure weight is going to affect the distance that you're going to be able to cast. Obviously, a heavier lure is going to cast further than a lighter lure, right? And also, the technique that you use for casting is going to have an effect on how accurate you cast or the length that you cast. When I'm kayak fishing, I like using a six foot, six inch long rod and I sidearm cast a lot. A lot of times I'm skipping those lures underneath the docks or I'm skipping those lures underneath the mangroves. Very rarely do I do an overhand cast. When you're fishing out of a boat, the length of your rod um, will really affect the way that you can cast, right? If you're in a boat and you've got a seven and a half foot long rod, right? And you're up in the bow of the boat and you, you pull that box back, <laughs> you pull that back to do a sidearm cast, but the console on the boat is in your way, right? Because you have a seven and a half foot long rod. Well, if you're using a six and a half foot long rod, maybe the console of the boat isn't in your way and you can get a good sidearm cast and you can skip your bait underneath the mangrove. So 
there are different applications for different lengths of fishing rods. If you're up on a bridge, right, and you've got an eight foot long rod, a longer rod on a bridge is better, or a pier is better than a shorter rod on a bridge. Because the reason is that that fish goes running back underneath the pier. You've got that longer rod that you can keep your line and the rod off of the concrete structure or the wood structure of the pier of the bridge that you're fishing on. If you have a shorter rod, it's harder to keep your line and your rod away from the line, like scraping on the bridge. So the longer, yeah, so you got my point, right? So you're using different length rods for different applications. I already said it, on the beach, you're gonna have a longer rod. If you, want, if you have to make a longer cast, but if you're in a kayak, you might wanna have a shorter rod because you're gonna be fishing around more obstructions, a more structure. If you're on the bank, right? You're a, a bass fisherman. You might wanna have a six foot long rod because you're, you're gonna be casting around trees and there might be palmettos or some type of brush or stuff around you. So a shorter rod is gonna help you be able to make a more accurate cast, not necessarily a longer cast because you're not gonna be able to you're not gonna be dealing with so many different obstructions when you have a shorter fishing rod, when you're bank fishing, or even when you're wade fishing and things like that. You know what, let's just wrap it up here, you guys. Practice, okay? The more you get out there, the more you fish, the more you practice casting, the better that you're gonna be, but you're gonna see some of these different things that I've been talking about in this video, how they affect your casting ability. So, practice, you guys, put these different tips in the practice that I've shared with you here, and you're gonna become a master caster. Thanks for watching this video. Thumbs up are appreciated. Get out there and go fishing, man. Life is fun, live it. See ya!